let's talk about protein chromatography. So our cells have produced our protein product, but cells don't produce just one protein. They produce thousands of different proteins. And our goal is to separate the protein that we want to use as our therapeutic product from all of the other proteins that are present in the mixture. And the primary way that we do this is using something called protein chromatography. Pro chromatography has been around really since the early 1900s, and chromatography is a way to separate one molecule from another. In this case, the molecules that we are, we are separating are protein molecules. So the chromatography system is made of a chromatography column, which contains what's called the stationary phase. And the stationary phase, as the name implies, doesn't move. The, some proteins will stick to the stationary phase. And then we have the second part of the chromatography system, which is called the mobile phase. And the mobile phase then moves the proteins over the stationary phase, and some proteins will selectively attach to the stationary phase, and others will not. And in this way, a separation is, is achieved. And the example of chromatography that you may know of, but haven't really thought of it, is either your Brita or your pure water filter system. You take water out of the sink, it has lots of different components in it, you run it over the filter, and the filter then catches the stuff in the water that you don't want to drink, the ions like phosphate and nitrate and iron and things like that. And if you have ever taken one apart, which I have, uh, there's also some charcoal in there which absorbs all the organics. And so our chromatography sort of works on the same system. We pour our proteins over the chromatography system, and the different molecules separate from one another. So let's sort of see how this works. We start off and we have a mixture of proteins up top here. Each of those different colors represents a different protein. They have different properties, and these are called physiochemical properties. And physiochemical properties could be things like differences in the charge, are they plus or minus charge, in the size, how big they are, or actually in their shape, which may determine what they bind to. So we apply these columns or load them onto the column, and these proteins then move down the column and they separate based on their different physiochemical properties. They come off the bottom, and this is called elution. Now, you have to think about this. If we're making a therapeutic protein, we're not making a few milligrams of a protein the way you would do in a research lab. We're making kilograms of protein. So these chromatography columns industrially are really large. They're up to one meter high and three meters across. So you could actually sleep in one of those columns if you wanted to. And the cost of that material can range anywhere from $500,000 to $2 million. And because we can't risk cross-contaminating our protein products, these are generally single-use uh, materials. So you use it once to separate your protein, and then you have to discard it. And that is how we separate proteins in biotechnology. If you want additional information on the different types of protein chromatography, please visit our website at biotechprimer.com or take one of our in-person classes and learn from our instructors. Thank you.